Mark decided to take his har har as a gag routine on the road, which meant I was a recipient of a new kind of fun. It started bright and early when Mark had decided the night before to play his first show in Grand Manor. I was dead asleep. I mean kids sleep, lost among dreams of games and cornflakes with honey. Har har! I want to stop now and tell you about sound as it impacts a kid from a distance of two inches. For first his eyes jolt open and there were marks and there was Mark's face with a big grin, a big happy grand grin. Next, the body reacts to such a state as a deafening wave rolls across me for it was a har har from some wild place let loose upon my bed and the pole soar, pole, pole, poor soul in it. And the motion is backwards, always away from such a surprise attack. A little bit from the eye of Thor. It's morning, I opened it up and was doing work last night with my blog and I mean on my um, YouTube channel. <sighs> I get to a push button life sometimes, guys. Oh yeah. But that's the I'm I'm ready to write again. It's so alive in my head and it's really I need a, a, a few more bodies to get out, like what's in here, you know? I met this man, Roscoe Lee Brown, and um, man, I told you about him before, right? But I'm gonna, I'm, yeah. Um, Roscoe Lee Brown, he's gonna be in my book, very significant part, right? Because Roscoe Lee Brown, man, all right, so he's from the movies Cowboys. He was in the movie Dr. King as the head of the uh, SNCC, Southern National uh, Catholic Council. He lives in Portland. His church is on the corner of 14th and um, uh, um, 14th. It's on, the, it's on the east, southeast side of Portland, he said. Or on 14th and something. He said his son was there. But I met him in 2000. When I left from here, and that's when I tell you about when they were trying to, really, everybody was trying to kill this brother, right? Price in my head, all that stuff, right? And so there was like, it was CB traffic enough in Eugene, so truckers are probably picking this stuff up going, hey man, they're, 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 they're doing a, a nigger hunt down in fucking Eugene, right? Because <laughs> that's what it was, they were going to kill a nigger, right? They were going to straight string me up. But anyways, I got out of town, and I go up to uh, Burnside Vision, and Burnside Vision is like, it's really, it's like just this really small hole of a mission, right, on Burnside, real, like, inner city stuff, right? And But I found a bed, stayed there, and I was there doing work, and um, Roscoe Lee Brown, man, he comes up, and he, he does a service, right? And... He he did a just he did a good sermon, and he was talking about when if God calls you right, and this man has a voice. If God calls you forth, but add resonance and I mean, <clears throat> God, I got a big voice. <laughs> I said I can't engage it well. <clears throat> yeah, you're like no wonder he can't sing anymore. Uh, I'm kind of shaking a little bit. <laughs> like I said, it's early. It's before my run. All right, all right, all right. Roscoe Lee Brown. Um, uh, during the service, he was just talking about coming to God, right, man? And I'm watching, uh, and this is all a bunch of brothers, really. It's all black men in this um, little part of the um, mission that we're at. The ones running it, the 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 staff inside of it, um, the um, the the people in it. I found that as soon as you cross the bridge in in Portland, like other 
cities I've been in. And it's such a strange thing, man. As soon as you cross something, and then suddenly it becomes all black. And that's that's how kind of Portland was set up. So, um, so he he's there, and he then he does a Bible study the next morning, right? Oh God, this is really hard right now, guys. Shimini. So, it's like the devil tries to grab my body and makes it so I can't tell you these beautiful things that God has shown me. I really don't think it's fair. Uh, you know? That's what I'm trying to say. It's like, all right, so I met him in the end, and he seemed to know who I was. I stopped, and I'm like, man, I just have to talk to you. There is such, I had no idea who he was. Okay, by, by the way. <laughs> None what? None whatsoever. And I stepped forward to reach out, and I'm like, I just had to meet you. I heard what you were saying in your Bible study, and you have such a presence about you that I would love to hear you preach again at any time. Now, this is a black man in the black part town, <laughs> really, right? Well, we was right on the white crest, but he had a bunch of white people, a bunch of younger attendees, uh, um, entourage, uh, there was one Afro-American person or maybe two with him, and then there was like two or three white people with him too, right? And all these people were just like clustered around this man and just, they were recipients of the wisdom thereof. And, um, and, the, and the beauty of this man and, and the, this, so yeah, we stopped and we shook hands and I'm like, he seemed to know what what I had like gone through, right? Because he asked me where I came from and he asked me my name. And I told him I said I came from the east, but um, I've been running from troubles. And he says, "Yeah, man, I know. Yes, I know. You have seen these troubles, but do not fear." as you move forward. He said something else, and I had to think about it, though. Something else profound. When I'm in pain right now, it's hard to get into my window, but that was a different window. I, um, that one makes me laugh. So I have to like be writing the story and then I can go back and pull out um, actual conversations. Um, but I have to, I can see everything. I can see the, the people and what they look like. He was wearing dark brown pants, uh, a, a, a kind of a, a off white shirt with a, like an off gray tie, slightly silvering around the sides. He's a, he was short and squat. His hands were really big. And, um, and uh, I remember just this one girl who was with him for some reason because she doubted on him. And she was like 25 years old. She, she looked like she was a, um, a grad student. But she doubted on him. She was wearing um, blue pants and white shirt. Uh, I mean, and... and, and, and Blue pants and a, like a white, um, I mean a blue cashmere, kind of dark white shoes. Very blonde hair, beautiful blonde hair, feathered hair here, blue eyes, oval little face. Um, and her eyes, her eyes were smart, quick. And they darted back and forth because she looked at the conversation like she had no idea what the conversation was about, right? It was like we knew something, right? Like, he knew where I come from, even though I didn't say it. And somehow I knew that he knew. Does that make sense? When you read my book, you, you, you'd be like, you'll understand that something was working for me when I was in Portland. Something, not just among the, the Afro-American brothers, but something higher there that was like, that's the same thing that's followed me around ever since I started Peace Up. Uh, look, I got to go, guys. Um, uh it's a little tick, 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 tick. <laughs> I got to say no.
<laughs> right? I gotta wrap up my knee. Peace, y'all. <laughs> Much love, man. This is a story trying to tell you how it is, how I see it, how I've seen it in my life. Oh, and that was the I Thor. But yeah, man. People I met in my life. <laughs>